I'm gonna have to ask you guys to bear with me. I'm gonna try to go really fast and I wanna be truthful to you guys. This is my second time doing this review today because the first one ended up deleting itself and never processed by the time I went back and looked to check on it um, as an upload. So anyways, this is episode seven, season eight of Love and Hip Hop New York and Remy and Mariah. Okay, so Mariah is in the booth, honey. She getting it in with her um, everything new edition. Everything so expensive. You know what I'm saying? Run up the run up the tab. That one. So Remy loves Mariah. They actually are at the same studio, but Mariah has never done a collaboration. You know what I'm saying? So she came at Remy like, hey, you know, I always loved you. I wanted you to do one you know a record with me and I thought it was really nice that Remy decided to give back to her by allowing her to um to actually you know send her the track because by the time this was over she was like send me the track you know what I mean but anyways in the middle of this um Rem was saying that she doesn't think that Mariah's style as far as her hair and her outfits match her you know her attitude so she would she wants Mariah to be a little bit more sleek you know what I mean Mariah was saying that on social media she's been getting pressured basically criticized by people over her butt and her boobs and that you know she feels like she wants to go get surgery and Remy Ma is all down for that as long as she's doing it for herself and not because people are pressuring her okay Mariah actually pulled out her boob okay and let me tell you guys I didn't get as many pictures as I wanted to or as I did the first time because I ended up deleting all the pictures and had to go all the way back through the episode as you can see i have it fast forwarding times three so whatever pictures i took they were times three okay so i didn't get all the details you know detailed pictures like i usually do but mariah did pull out her boob honey okay and uh remy was like lady do not do that anymore but anyway rem decided that she will co-sign her as far as her boobs are concerned you know she she'll give her that love and also that she'll do the record for her i thought that was a moment that i really loved i've never seen them two do a scene together before but i was pleasantly surprised when they did okay um especially when mariah said i love you down i thought that was so sweet um, for one friend to say to another friend. Anyways, Papoose and Jaque met up. Of course, Papoose is proud of Jaque, you know, the things that he's doing in his rap career, and he really believes in Jaque. So that's the reason why he's working with Jaque. And Jaque is also really appreciative of Papoose, and, and he's learning things from Papoose as far as how loyal he is to Remy and how he runs his business and everything. So anyway, they start talking about Sophia Body and how he kicked her out the house, and he says that um, he investigated it because Papoose asked him did you investigate what happened so he said he did investigate it and people on the streets are telling him that she's been fighting mariah over this man and so papoose was like you might just need to do what you're doing and move on which i absolutely agree with i don't see a reason for him to stay in a relationship with sophia body as she is doing her antics you know rolling around in a bed with other men that's just not loyal it don't matter which way you look at it and you can look at it like it's nothing but at the end of the day it really is to a serious relationship uh grown adults know what i'm talking about but anyway they start talking about about Remy Ma's in vitro and how they want her to be pregnant by the end of the year and they just encouraged each other to you know keep doing what Papoose is doing and he told Jaque you know you're gonna find you somebody to love you don't even trip and I agree with that I think he needs to move on from Sophia body and I'm glad he did anyway Rich and Anais Lord they are in the car talking about they had fun the other day she kissing on his arm and everything else child looking like a thought okay um her phone kept ringing and of course Rich was like why is your phone keep ringing what's that LED you know he says that she's on his time so he has a right to ask and she's like you know I'm a married woman and it's crazy because he had asked her does she still think or does the husband still think that they're going strong or whatever and she actually asked him does he want her to get a divorce okay now I thought his response was good to this he was like that's up to you to get a divorce but the fact that she would even ask him this early on in their relationship is a bit much I think they both too old to be doing all of this they doing extras that's just in my opinion but anyways he says that it's up to her um, she says well you leaving, leaving it all on me and then she made some bad metaphor about leaving cake on the floor and he was like no I came and fixed the cake and took you from the mess that was from the cake she took time to point out that she's not that hoe over there she's that hoe over here and I thought that was in bad taste and I used you need to step your game up you got two kids that's going to be looking at this you looking like a hot mess on this tv it's just not okay but anyway they continue to do their kissy thing and hang out or whatever you know it, it just wasn't cute anyway so Safari he just got back from his uncle's funeral in LA okay now I was always wondering if this is the same uncle who we saw over a year ago on social media because he had gotten stabbed you know he said he was just coming from the funeral so 
I was just wondering when they shot this show. But anyway, Self showed up and they were talking about his uncle, how his uncle was like a father figure to him and how he's in pain just watching his mother go through the fact that her brother has passed away and it's making him weak. So Self actually... Um, can relate to him because he said that he had lost his mother and it really affected him but one thing that he definitely did do was keep moving forward and man that's the only thing you can do especially when you're grieving like that i mean all you can do is move forward and try to hold on to the memories of that person without letting it eat you up inside you know what i mean but he um, inspired Safari to put it in his music. And Safari agreed that it probably would be best for him to express it musically since that's how he expresses himself. But I love this moment of brotherhood between these two. I really like that. That was one of my one of the good scenes in here. And I think this episode had a lot of scenes where um, they were really showing how bonded the cast was instead of them always arguing, which was a great thing. So I thought this was really awesome. A building is being named after Navarro. And I just love Navarro. He's actually one of my favorite people on this show because he be on his grown man stuff, okay? Where Richie Dallas was weak with all the flirting from NIEs. Honey, he be shutting that down, honey, and he straight be on his grown woman stuff, okay? He went to go pick up NIEs for her video shoot or something. I'm not sure exactly what he went to go pick NIEs up for. I'm not going to even lie to y'all. But they talked about Ashley not doing, you know, not putting in the work. Now, if you remember on the last episode, Navarro also told Rich Dollars that he feel like Ashley sleeps in until about 12 one o'clock and she just not on her grind you know so he actually agreed with um Anais and Anais was saying that maybe Ashley is focusing more on her sister Aisha's career because you know that's her sister but Navarro did agree and he was like you know what we all need to be on top of our stuff so Anais made this face where she was like can I be on top of things right here like flirting with him and I just love the way he just takes all the thoughtism out of the conversation he was like girl you can't fit on top of me like keep it pushing and he did it on some grown man like we could still get along, but no, ain't none of that. Okay. So anyway, Sophia body wants to apologize for the whole James R thing. Like girl, please. How could you apologize for rolling around in the bed with another dude behind your dude's back on the camera fighting over the dude and then receiving a dog from your dog, baby daddy, like girl, stop it. So anyway, she had the nerve to say she also wants him to apologize to her for acting, you know, overreacting, but how was he overreacting? He refused to apologize first of all, but how is he overreacting when this girl did all this stuff behind his back? I don't understand. He's just hurt. That's not an overreaction. That's actually being hurt. Okay. So basically she goes in her car and she gets him a gift and he tells the camera and the green screen that there's nothing that she can do to basically get him back. And I, at that point, I knew this whole thing was going to turn out to be a mess. But as she tried to give him the gift, he was like, take that gift and that dog and take it back to James R. Because he don't want anything to do with her. He was like, I don't want nothing to do with you, Shorty. And he walked away, called her a thought. And while he was walking away, she was like, I'm Sophia Body. I get whatever I want. Because he was saying her car probably came from another person. This car, oh, did I get the car? I didn't get the car in there. Okay because I got less pictures in this version of my um, review okay so anyway next scene Aisha now I thought this was Ashley but this is actually Aisha which is Ashley's sister she went to go meet Navarro now she's one of their clients in their company and she wants him to fire Ashley she said that Ashley has not been answering her calls returning emails or booking her at all and she's pretty much tired of it Navarro feels the pressure but he's like how am I gonna fire my girlfriend and your sister you know what I mean so she really didn't give a damn she was like the next time I see you she needs to be fired actually what she said was she could she said roll over in the bed in the middle of the night and fire her i don't care honey i thought that was some cold mess to be coming from your own sister i'm sorry that made me take a double look made me take a double look but um anyways navarro is having a building named after him let's see where are we at with this okay uh All right, so we in the Gwinnett Cave. Self and Jacquay um, have been talking, and Self has called, or Jacquay has called Self in order to basically vent to him. So Self was just answering to, you know, the bat signal, honey, okay? And he basically told Rich that, um, your boy Jacque was seeing Sophia Body, and Rich said that Sophia Body had a whole bunch of drama, so he understands why Jacque is going through what he's going through. But anyway, Jacque 
came in and he started talking about um Sophia body but before he did that they made fun of his hat being like a, a condom hat I thought that was so funny but as they were talking about Sophia body and a dog and him kicking her out and you know um her giving him a present from some other dude's money Snoop was like that's not right how you gonna have another fur baby with another dude you know what I mean and she's absolutely right that's just ridiculous um and then so and then you pull up in a, a new car and giving it like girl bye you're a thought so anyways he laughed he said it's impossible not to laugh when you in the Gwinnett cave and I thought that was a good thing for him to laugh like that I, I would hate to see this young man really heartbroken over this thought especially because everybody knows that she's a thought anyway Snoop said that he must have the dog underneath his hat honey okay and that scene was so funny anyway Mariah goes to Dr. Miami um, she basically wants to get her boobs done to the point where she doesn't have to wear a bra and she wants to know how soon she can get her nipples played with honey. Okay. He tells her to wait a month, even though they're going to be feel, be feeling better in a week, you know, but we don't want no problems, girl. So go ahead and relax on that note. I don't even know why she asked him that on camera. That was a personal question that she should have held on to. Okay. But I'm glad now I know it took at least a month after surgery. Okay. Y'all anyway, she's perfectly healthy. She's never gotten surgery, never been under anesthesia. So she basically went to the um, anesthesia room and got her surgery okay and hey if that's what you want to do for yourself go ahead more power to you so in the next scene Sophia body um goes to james r's house talking about she didn't know where else to go okay um turns out that she's saying that the dog is dying which i definitely don't believe this is her saying please don't let my little dog die i don't believe that at all she starts telling him that the doctor had to give the dog three shots the dog was vomiting everywhere and then she tells him that jacque kicked her out and the whole time he's like why would he let a beautiful lady like you go thank you for pushing her into my arms i'm gonna take care of you and the dog like just real extra out i just cannot get with James or I just am not with his flow I think he's just super corny I just cannot stand it and I definitely think he's an opportunist now anyways Navarro is finally have that having that building named after him Fetty Wap is in the building okay he cannot seem to stay himself up off of this freaking show all right and I know I got less shots I was hoping I would have got a shot of Fetty Wap but I definitely did not so my bad anyway the whole time Oh, let me say this. He is getting a building named after him because he grew up and became the first African-American public defender in the city of Hackensack, New Jersey, I believe it is. But anyway, Rich and Anais are flirting openly there. Remember, Navarro doesn't know because when Rich tried to tell him about it, um, it was basically uh, he was talking about his father's diabetes. So Rich never got the chance to tell him. But so he walks on him and he, he walks up on him and he was like, is this a coincidence that y'all came together? And they basically told him that they were sleeping with each other. And he was shocked, like to the point where he actually said he wasn't expecting it. And he called it a whole headache. OK, and then he started calling Anais, Anais dollars. And then while all that's happening, Aisha, which is his sister's. Uh, his girlfriend's sister walks up on him and she's like, have you fired Anais yet? Just like that. Like didn't even say congratulations, whatever. Um, and what struck me as odd is that she tried to allude to the fact that Anais might be drunk. Like, girl, she a grown woman, even if she is drinking now. I ain't hating on no woman drinking now. I don't like how her thoughtish behavior, but my God, like, you ain't her parent. This girl seems really stuck up, and I really don't like her attitude on the show, to be honest. I don't know if they're just making her seem like that or if she really is like that. But she's basically saying she wants Anais fired because, you know, her business is first. So, and uh, she wants Ashley fired. So, Anais all in the background listening to their conversation. And as soon as Ashley walks out, Anais walks up and lets Ashley know that they have been talking about firing her. So, she's like, what? 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 Like, she literally stood there and, like, looked back and forth for a minute and, like, listened to them argue. And then once Anais walked away, she was like, what are, what are you guys talking about? And her, he was like, she don't mean it like that. And his her sister was like, yes, I do mean it like that. I want her fired. And I was just like, wow, this reminds me of basketball wise with that girl and her sister. Y'all know who I'm talking about? The sisters that was just on there. OK, anyways, um, 
It was a whole mess. She basically told them that their business going to blow up in their face and walked away. So we're 49 minutes in. So um, at this point, Self is putting on a show and Safari is doing his paradise bit. But before he does that, he talks about his uncle and how everybody got life and, you know, breathing, you know, breath in their lungs. And we should all appreciate what we're where we are and, you know, all that stuff. But the show was really successful. Everybody liked it. I liked it. I thought it had meaning. I thought it was good. All right, so Remy um, has been handling her to-do list, honey, but she hasn't heard anything about the IVF, so she's talking to Papoose like, what's going on? You know, they start talking about Chris Brown and how she's a beast in the studio, so they all um, had to bring their A-game or whatever, and she's like, well, everything else is going well, but, you know, you have one job, and that was for you to find a doctor, and you haven't found a doctor. Now, I didn't like this part because it seemed like Papoose was blaming her for not having a baby. He started saying, she's saying one thing, but she's doing another by doing all of this stuff. He's like, you know, first she said after the wedding, then she said after this video shoot or this, you know, album, and then she said find a doctor. So he's like, he didn't want to move on it. You know what I mean? And I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't, I didn't like him insinuating that it's all her fault that she didn't have a baby when she pointed this out too, when they did get married and she did get pregnant after the wedding. So she did do her part and she tried her best, but unfortunately she couldn't hold that baby. And I think it's not right. He should definitely be going to find a doctor for her and not, you know, making her feel guilty for not, um, you know, for basically ha being fertilized yet. I don't think that was right at all. Papoose, even though I love me some black love and I love Papoose, I just didn't like that at all. I thought for the most part, this episode showed me about how these people come together um, and how situations could be split apart. But I like the way that they showed the main cast that we know and how they're coming together in support of each other. Rich Dollar still being his regular host self. He ain't doing nothing different. You know what I mean? Ain't no different storyline. Just being a whole with the artist. And um, Navarro is really on some grown man stuff. I really love it. As for this kid, James R. and Sophia Body, they both are very immature and they deserve each other. Mariah is also immature, which is probably why she was attracted to James R. in the first place. I don't feel like they're talking about enough of Snoop. And I don't appreciate that. Okay. But the guy, Jaquay, I really feel sorry for him. He's His situation is a whole hot mess. Anyway, you guys leave your comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe.